Hello everyone, hope you are having a nice day. Welcome to yet another video of system software. Pre in the previous videos, we have discussed about an SIC assembler. What is an assembler? An assembler will convert your assembly level code into an object code and from that object code, we have converted that object code into an object program. So for that, we have used different records like a header record, text record and end record. So look at this picture. What can you predict from this picture? See, you are right, storing something somewhere. So, the topic that we are going to discuss today is a uh, data structure. The data structures that are used by SIC while converting an uh, assembler program into object program. So, that's the thing we are going to discuss. And today's class, the thing will be assembler data structure and uh, the passes. So, pass in the sense your program, you have the program, first the program will be scanned entirely once to allocate address. That means the location is given 1000, 1000, 1000, 2003, up to 2079 we have given. That is you read the program once or you, you traverse the program once, you travel through the program once and the second time you start again and you are going you are giving the object code so it contains two passes and how does this assembler data structures help in these two passes that we will see so the uh, first one is assembler data structures and you have three data structures first one is operation code table or op tab second one is symbol table or symbol tab and third one is uh, location counter so, we will see that one by one. First one is uh, operation code table. So, when you see this table, this is an ordinary wooden table. So, you can store something inside this table, right? So, we can store something inside this table or there are space for storage, there are space for this, uh, your laptop and all those things. And similarly, your op operation code table will contain two things. Generally, it contains two things. So, first one is uh, opcode and second one is uh, its equivalent value. So, opcode and its equivalent. So, table will be in this form, rows and columns and first you will have an opcode for example, STL may be your opcode and its value is 14, its equivalent value. Similarly, LDA is an another opcode, its equivalent value is 00. Similarly, we have all the opcodes supported by SIC and SICXC will be present in this operation code table. So, an operation code table contains an operation codes as well as its mnemonic equivalents. So, we will see that so, op table is, it contains mnemonic operation, it contains mnemonic operation codes and their machine equivalents, right. Next, for example, as we see, as we have seen there, LDA and STL, these two things are present. Suppose, in other machine architectures, it may also contain instruction format and length. Suppose, for example, in general, our SIC will contain opcode and its machine equivalent. It may also contain instruction format, format of instruction as well as length, length of the instruction. For example, in SIC instruction, SIC XC instruction, you have an opcode, for example, STL opcode, its equivalent is 14, its format can be 3 or 4, and length of the instruction can be 24 bits or 32 bits. Similarly, in other complex machine architectures, you will have for instruction format and length. Generally, you will have only opcode and its equivalent value. Even when your instruction, when your uh, machine architecture is little bit complex, it will contain these values. The next one is a symbol table. See, you can see a table here. 
this symbol table contains uh, mainly two things name and address of each label name and address of each label in a program for example suppose we have seen a label called as retadr in our program and retadr is in the memory location 1033 that means address of that label then it also has a flag field the flag field will say it's if there is an error or not true or false maybe 1 or 0 true or false it the flag field is used to check whether this is an valid name or retadr is actually present inside the program suppose the name present is retadr and i have stored as retadr then it's an error because there is no such label inside the program so this error field is to check the authenticity of your uh, symbol that is stored in your symbol table so we'll see that symbol table is used to store the address assigned to label that is symbol table is used to store the address assigned to labels so for example if there is copy it is thousand first means it's thousand for each label there will be some value then it, it includes the name and address of each label we have discussed this include flags to indicate error condition then it may also contain type and length uh, for example uh, you can have this for example there is a something called as word so the length of this is 3 if it is byte length of this is 1 so such information will also be present then the third and the last one is a location counter so what is location counter location counter is a data structure it's like uh, for example in for loop there is an value called as for i is equal to 0 initially this i value will mostly it will be set to 0 1 so that means it is a initial value and every time a loop gets incremented i value also gets incremented similarly location count initially the value of location counter will be the starting address of the program when you have so location counter is specified by loc ctr and its initial value is uh, starting address so our the in copy program the starting address was 1000 so location counter value is 1000 initially the value of location counter was what 1000 next location counter is a variable that is used to assign address to labels for example uh, so the first value is start then what we do now next listen when location counter value is 1000 initially and first instruction is stl retadr so what we do location counter is now incremented because this is 3 byte instruction now it's so stl will be stored in 1000 1001 and 1002 then now stl is the final value is 1002 when the next instruction comes retadr value is incremented to 3003 3, because it has stored all the value first instruction occupied till 1002 now in instruction is so l location counter is incremented to 1003 then when a next instruction comes again if it is a 3 byte instruction it is incremented to 1006 and again if a 3 instruction comes it is incremented to 1009 suppose if a word comes word is again 3 byte it is incremented to a b so it is 100 c similarly whenever you are whenever you are uh, encountering an instruction the size of the instruction is added to the location counter whenever you are encountering a word or byte the size of that particular thing is added so that uh, location counter is incremented so that is how we use that clear so 
we have discussed three things opcode table symbol table and uh, location counter now how this opcode table is used in uh, pass 1 and pass 2 so what is pass 1 that is uh, you might have learned in a subject called data structure so you might have learned like this that is traversing a tree that means traveling the tree from root to node or visiting all the nodes in a tree from top to bottom similarly when you are uh, visiting all the lines in the program top to bottom that is called as pass you are moving from the top of the program to the end of the program so one pass but to convert a pro assembly level program from assembly level language to an uh, object program you require two passes so what is the work of this opcode table in two passes opcode table is used to look up and validate the operation codes for example there is a instruction called as stl i have to check whether this stl is a right opcode or not first one it is used to look up and next one in the pass to the stl and you have something called as stl so in pass one i have checked whether it is right or not next in the next step only stl is converted to its machine equivalent one four clear first one you are checking whether the operation code is a valid operation code or it is supported by your machine architecture second one it is converted into its machine language then in sic xc what you do is you will find the instruction length for incrementing for example suppose stl instruction is there here this xtl instruction can be 3 or 4 you cannot always say this will be 3 format 3 or format 4 in SICXC you have 4 formats and sometimes it can be format 3 or sometimes it can also come in format 4 so at pass 1 you will decide because if there is a plus symbol before this I can confidently say that it is format 4 if there is no plus symbol then it is format 3 so in SICXC during pass 1 it is used to find the instruction length then here the operation code table is created as a hash table and it is a static table why it is a static table because it is defined by the machine architecture already and you cannot add data or delete data from that because it is inbuilt in the machine architecture so you cannot go for adding or removing data from that clear the labels are entered in symbol table along with assigned address for example, you have a label like uh, buffer and its address is 1033. So, in the pass one, labels are entered along with address given by location counter. Next step, symbols used as operand are looked up in a symbol table to obtain the address. For example, now, for example, if I have an instruction like stl buffer so next what i will do suppose i have an instruction like stl uh, buffer first i will put the value for stl then buffer value is obtained from symbol table which is 1033 now the instruction is translated into 141033 so next one is uh, it is also organized as a hash table and here we can enter data mostly it is organized as a hash table for uh, faster access and here the entries are uh, you, you can add entries as long as you are creating new labels but uh, rarely it is deleted because you enter the right data and mostly till the end of the program the data are not deleted in today's class we have discussed about the different data structures used by SIC like symbol table operation code table and location counter and we have also discussed about how a symbol table and operation code table behaves when a pass one assembler or pass two assembler works so that is about today's class in the next class we will be discussing about how an sic xc assembler works and how an sic xc program is converted into an object program we'll discuss that hope you understood today's class thanks for watching thank you